I'm Liam Bloom with the United States Association for Body Psychotherapy. In challenging times when stress and anxiety run high, nurturing your body, brain, and mind is more important than ever. Maintaining presence and equanimity depends on your capacity to mindfully align sensations, emotions, and thoughts. These short somatic exercises generously offered by our members teach you how to use your energy, emotions, and awareness so that you can face challenges with confidence and step into your life feeling connected and empowered. Use them for yourself and with your clients. Dave, with your background and training, what can you suggest to help people ease up their anxiety? Well, that's a really interesting and important question. Because right now, of course, there's a lot of anxiety. So very briefly, let me tell you how I define anxiety, because it's very important to consider if we're going to help someone ease up on it. Anxiety is actually a physical and postural state. All emotions are. They're not abstract. They're not ethereal. They're actually bodily and tangible. So I define anxiety as a tensing of the pelvic floor, a tensing of the abdomen, a contraction of the diaphragm and the chest, the neck, the tongue, the throat, even in the eyes. So uh, a full-blown real... Right, that's more like fear, but anxiety would be a lesser version of that, mm. like that. So if that's how we define anxiety, we can look at ways to shift that fairly simple and fairly quickly anywhere. Right? If we look at it through the eyes of how, our how we use our bodies. So rather than me just describe this, Liam, let's have you do this. Try something. Okay, perfect. Love to. Very, very simply, very simply. Allow your tongue to soften. So allow your tongue to just sort of melt or ooze to the floor of your mouth, like that. Mm -hmm. And you might notice what happens down through the rest of your trunk, your neck, your throat, the rest of your body, your breathing. What, what do you notice? What kinds of things do you notice in your breathing or in your belly as you allow your tongue to soften? Well, the first thing I'm noticing is just getting comfortable with my, my tongue dropping down to the floor mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in knowing what that is. And then oh, and uh, once I do that, then I feel like uh, everything just sort of starts to breathe more rhythmically. Right, right. Yeah, it uh, sort of softens down below. Yeah. Okay. We'll try, have you try doing the opposite. Gently press your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. And notice, yeah, notice what happens in your breathing or your chest or your belly, even your pelvic floor. Well, I feel like I'm sort of more in my upper range here. Yeah. With, with the breathing. Yeah, like everything goes up. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we do when we're in a more anxiety-oriented breathing. So allow your tongue to soften again. Okay. Just kind of melt like that. Yeah. You notice even your eyes, the muscles around your eyes relax a little. You're breathing. And it's just a cueing in my mind. I'm just saying soften your tongue. It's I don't feel like I'm like forcing it or moving it anywhere. It just finds its own place, right? Exactly. It just finds its own place. And usually people will say something like, yeah, it feels like breathing is easier, even down into the pelvic floor is softer, right? Eyes, yeah, there, everything settles. Like, like you drop into your body a little bit more. This is the opposite of anxiety, right? Now, let's add to this. And, and you could do this anywhere. You could do it in the supermarket. Nobody will know. Mm -hmm. Try something, add just a little bit, just a little bit. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, just a little. Not a lot, because then it gets into too big a movement. Just a little with a soft there. And you notice you drop down even a little bit more? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
Now, if there's something where you're sitting that your eyes would like to see, what they would choose to look at, well, just notice when you have choice over what your eyes would like to see. Can I move them around or do I? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Movement also is an opposite of anxiety. Gentle movement. With the eyes. Yeah, your eyes, your head. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, All right. And choice, and choice. I see. So with my movement, I, I can, or what I focus on, I can move my head with it. That's right. Yeah. And you can decide what your eyes would like to see. Cool. Yeah. And, and as you, yeah, notice much more expansive of my little toy here, much more expansive breath. Love it. Yeah. If this is anxiety, now you're in more expansion and rhythm. Okay. And if you allow whatever your eyes want to see, if you allow your eyes to actually receive rather than go out and look at or look for, but just to gently receive what you've chosen, along with soft tongue, which softens your belly and your breathing. There, you notice how you have expanded, but you're also very present. Yeah there. This is most definitely the opposite of anxiety. And you, you used an important word when you asked me, how can you ease up on anxiety? The key word there is ease. There's more ease here. Anxiety is a state of more dis-ease. Right. In that way. Very easy, very quick. Uh, anybody can do this really anywhere. Practitioners can invite their clients to soften their tongue, their eyes, receiving eyes, and move a little bit. Right? Very easy, very quick. There you go. Wow, thanks for the easing, Dave. That was You're really welcome. cool. So could you kind of, I'm so in it, can you give me a recap of what just happened? Yeah, what just happened was that you really, in, in, with your physical body, the, the musculature, the physiology, countered the doing of anxiety in a very simple way. Soft tongue, and that translates down your entire body. It shifts your breathing to a, more, a breathing pattern of more ease. It relaxes the belly, and it'll relax even all the way down to the pelvic floor for some people. Some people may need a little bit more uh, direction with that, right? And then you added a little bit of movement, just a little bit, and invited your eyes to, to not work as hard by receiving rather than going out and looking and doing that. Awesome. And people can do this at home. They can do it in a session with a client. Is there a good time, bad time, or in a session when to bring that in? I would say, you know, if a client, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, moving toward anxiety, fear, terror, really talking, which is important to touch and feel, but not to stay there too long, right? right. You know, that in, 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 in somatic experiencing uh, work and in, in, in base work, we call that um, tight, we want to titrate it, just touch it a little bit and then ease out of it ease out of it. And that allows a, a, an expansion, a, a, a practicing at well, you know, going in and out of it, expansion, constriction, moving between, moving between. Because when we're anxious, when we're in fear, when we're traumatized, that ability, that rhythmicity really goes offline. This is fantastic. Thank you for taking the time to just give us this wonderful exercise. My pleasure. My pleasure. You're welcome. Take care, Dad. You too. Good to see you.